So I promise that we'll move on to more positive subject matter within <laughs> athletics, but, but whilst on the doping subject, uh, let's talk Justin Gatlin, who has been featured in the Breeze Sport app uh, with various quotes um, and has, it's fair to say, polarised opinion, but, uh, <laughs> ma mainly on the negative side. He's still competing, he's doing very well, he's a major medal hope for, for the world champs and for, for Rio. What are your thoughts on him? Oh, I, I really can't stand the guy. And it's not because um, he's cheated twice, because he's unrepentant. There's a lot of people who cheat in sport are sorry that they've cheated in sport. They realise they made a mistake. And whether you believe them or not, they generally are repentant. Um, I don't really believe in second chances or third chances. Um, but this guy is totally oblivious to what the rest of the world think. You know, he was, he was caught once... Um, and it was blamed that he had ADHD and medication, blamed it on that. And then in 2006, he gets caught again and blames his masseur for rubbing testosterone cream into his body. You know, he's at 33 now. He's running faster than he ever was. He's, you know, got the two fastest times in the, two, in the 100 and the 200 now. He's a real threat to Bolt. And I think, um, you know, I'm really scared that he'll go to the Olympics next year and win. And that is just not a victory for clean sport. And it's just the fact he's, he's so arrogant about it. He doesn't care. And actually, if he doesn't care, the people around him don't care. Um, and you do see a lot on social media about people who've cheated once and they get a second chance. And everyone's going, like, everyone deserves a second chance. Okay, he's got a second chance. But then he, he messed that up. But he doesn't admit it. He's just non he doesn't admit that he's done it. And that is so frustrating, and that he's in the sport actually taking livelihoods of other people. And that's what people don't understand. It's not just the person who he beats who is second, third, and fourth. It's the person who never made the final who are ninth. And if it was found that he was doping, or actually the benefits of the cheating that did occur in his career, you know, eight, nine years ago, are benefiting now. He's 33. There's got to be some benefit. You don't get faster at 33. You can maintain a level. Kim Collins can testify and to that, but can you get faster? I, I really don't think so. And even though there's a, a Scandinavian um, um, research on um, lab mice, and he was like belittled that research. How can you compare a, ma a mouse to me? And I just think he's just so arrogant. And that's what gets me. And that's why actually I don't hate many people, if any, but I really hate him. And I think. That's one reason why he doesn't compete in our country. He will never be invited to any of the Diamond Leagues in Britain because they want a hard stance on people who've cheated like he has and are non-repentant. Regardless of whether he was repentant yeah. or not, should he be running? Um, no, not at all. He's had two opportunities and he's, he's failed two drug tests. So his second ban was originally an eight-year ban, reduced to four based on information that he'd given. Um, so he still came back from a four-year ban, which then shows the system is still wrong because you still can come back from a four-year ban and still run the fastest you've ever run, which shows actually at least on the second time you've been caught, you should have a life ban. Now, a lot of people believe that first time they should get a life ban, and I was originally one of them, but depending on the circumstances in each case is different. Um, the fact that he has been caught for hardcore testosterone should really mean that he should have received a life ban and having it reduced to four similar to Tyson Gay reduced to one it's crazy but he's a bit more repentant and but still the fact that you know just because you've given information upon other people doesn't mean that your ban should be reduced I'm sure if a mass murderer gave information on somebody else who who'd murdered somebody they don't get reduced in their sentence so yeah bye you're going to court and thank you for helping us so you might get a pillow in your cell. That's that's your, that's your <laughs> for giving us information. But you're not going to, you know, half your sentence because you've given us information on somebody who helped you murder people. Crazy. So, and Justin Gatlin has just signed a new Nike sponsorship deal, which I would imagine is is worth a few zeros. Probably. How, do, how does that feel? Um, I used to be a, a Nike contracted athlete, and I think. Um, What's interesting to know is nobody who's a night conscious athlete in this country has actually spoken out, out about it, interestingly, because they're worried about how they'll be perceived and what their Nike contract says about it. Um, I think it's awful. I think there's a common theme with some of these. Nike has been involved in the Nike Oregon project with Mo, uh, well, with Salazar, I should say, not Mo, um, and Gatlin. I just think 
in America, I, I think the attitude towards doping is different to the attitude towards it in Europe. Um, there is a massive gulf in, in, in attitudes, I think. I think people in the sport will think the same as probably me in America, but the wider public have a general different opinion, um, I think, about Gatlin. So they think, oh, well, Gatlin will appeal in America, and that's probably why Nike have signed him. Um, w would he have been signed by Nike if he was in Europe, by Nike Europe? I don't know, probably not, because they know the feeling of the people of Europe. So um, they probably wouldn't. So I think the attitude in the States is a lot different to the attitude over here about doping.